amazing people that have just really decided that they saw a need somewhere and they wanted to make a change. And so every um, every day we're interviewing a few entrepreneurs, um, people really necessarily, not necessarily people that own a business, but um, maybe they do, maybe they run a business, maybe they just have a great spirit and they wanted to create something they saw a need for. You know, yesterday we were interviewing some people that aren't necessarily business owners, but it talked. they talked about how they um, moved from one business to another and for the reason for that. And it's people not being afraid to go out there and try things. And so we're sharing this stuff for a couple of reasons. One, because I want you guys to hear these stories. These stories from these people are just incredible and you can really relate. But two, as you relate, I also want you to understand that if there's something you want to do, it's available. There's so many resources out there um, and that you guys can really do whatever you want to do. And on top of everything else, as I was talking to this beautiful lady right here, to right now we're all experiencing like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm stuck at home. What am I going to do? So great time to be watching something other than Netflix and eating brownies, right? <laughs> so today I have an amazing privilege to introduce you to a lady that I met virtually, gosh, a little over a year ago. And she is just killing it with, you know, things that she's working on. And I want her to tell you all about her story. So Stacey Lynn, um, give us a little bit about you. Tell us who you are, um, you know, what, what your behind the scenes story is, and then we'll get into some of the details. Sure, absolutely. Well, thanks for inviting me on. This is an absolute pleasure. Um, so um, I guess you could say my technical title is a holistic health coach or a drugless practitioner. Interesting, okay. Um, I basically work with people to show them a more holistic way of feeling their best, regardless of what that is. Um, what was your other question? <laughs> no, just tell us your backstory. Tell us like who you are, what you know, what you're, what you do, what, how'd you get here? What it, you know, the, just give us a little behind the scenes. Okay, well, what kind of propelled me into this profession is about 10 years ago, I was told I was heading for organ failure and I needed to get real serious about my health. And of course, I was still in the mindset of, well, don't you have a pill for this? Or can you give me a shot? What do you mean? And the doctor said, no, you're basically killing yourself. You need to do something different. And that led me down the path of really becoming my own advocate. And that is honestly what I'm trying to teach people is to be their own advocate, to feel empowered, to really take control of their health. Because the truth is, when we feel healthy and we're at our best, we're going to do our best, no matter if that's in our profession, as a parent, as a spouse, as a business owner. And that's just the way that it is. So fast forward, this was 10 years. I was given 10 years before I needed organ failure. And well, nice. I'm not in that anymore, awesome. <laughs> obviously. A lot of that came from getting real with my lifestyle, my choices, my mindset around food and exercise and what I thought was good for me versus what actually is good for me. Um, I've over also overcome quite a few things. Um, I've been able to put an autoimmune disease in remission. Nice. I have not one, but two brain surgeries because of a car accident. I was going to ask if you were going to share that part of your story because that, you know, I mean, that's real. You know, that's really you. You've overcome some things that most people will never experience in their life. So that's really real. So thanks for sharing that. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I do get people that reach out to me just because of the traumatic brain injury thing. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people, when you hear traumatic brain injury, you automatically think, oh, it's somebody who's totally disabled, who cannot function on their own, is in a wheelchair or, you know, in a facility. And right. although I'm actually deemed totally disabled, I, I don't view myself as that at all. I just choose not to because I'm a mom, I'm a wife, and I run a business. So I don't have you time. Love it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. See, this is why I'm telling these stories, guys, or I'm enabling you guys to tell these stories because this lady, you know, all the things that you think you can't do, she's done them because she's just not letting it not not letting that tell her story. And I just love it. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah, that's fantastic, Stacey. That's wonderful. So tell us a little about your family. So you're married and you have some children and uh, are you struggling like all the other moms right now and dads who have everybody at home trying to figure out how to keep everybody busy right now? 
You know what? Here's the thing. Before I got into um, health and wellness, mm-hmm. I actually ran a licensed child daycare for 20 years. Oh. So, so to be honest with you, this is really not that difficult for me that, and well, I have teenagers, so it's a little bit different when you have little ones. Yeah. Um, but uh, I've kept them very busy with yard work and housework. <laughs> And, you know, starting next week, we're actually going to dig into the school part of it because they're going to start the online schooling here in the county. So it's going to be a little bit of a challenge, I think, for my kids to learn to separate school time, work time versus home relax time. But that's where planning comes into place. And I'm just going to include them in the planning process. You know, what's really cool about that and and neat that you're sharing that is because you have teenagers who can understand a little bit more about what's going on, they then will be able to probably respect and relate more when you have separated times because they will see, wow, this is what mom goes through. She works at home and this is how she separates her time and makes it more valuable. So it could be all the way. I mean, once you get through some of the initial (laughs) pullback on it, but I mean, that's going to be just a great awareness for them too, as young adults to learn how to, to do these kind of things. Wow. That's really powerful. Well, you know, the other thing too is My kids have seen me over the last, I don't know, eight, nine years really Mm -hmm. build this business. And because I was running a daycare during the day in the evening, it was my health and wellness business. Mm -hmm. So they are used to the fact that when mom's in her office and the door is closed, it's work time. And Mm -hmm. what I did to really show them the power behind it or the reasoning or the why behind it Mm -hmm. is together like this family dream board like okay this is what we want to do this is where we want to go these are things you want to accomplish in the next five years or three years whatever so anytime that maybe they were getting a little frustrated that I wasn't giving enough time to just them I would point them direct them over to the board and say remember I'm doing this so that we can get that Gosh, I love these nuggets. That's fantastic. A family dream board. God, guys, you know, we all think about all of us um, having, you know, your own goal board or dream board, but sharing that with your family and making that uh, a a family adventure. Gosh, that's such, that is such great, good information. Gosh, I really appreciate you sharing that. This is exactly why I'm doing this, guys, is because all of us have all these, you know, ideas and thoughts and plans, but some of these people are just working at it and have figured out some of these nuances. So thanks for sharing that. That's a cool, really cool nugget. I like that a lot. The mom win, that's for sure. (laughs) Yeah. Well, and not only that, I mean, even if you're not, you know, your kids are grown and gone, you know, maybe your spouse doesn't totally get it. You know, your, uh, whether it's your husband or your wife, you work at home and I mean, everybody's getting it right now. Right. I mean, I think we're all getting a new realization for what life is how things are different and how people are, um, how we do act and resolve it. But, you know, I think everybody's getting a different appreciation for that work at home kind of concept now, but these kind of ideas are great because even if you have a spouse or a roommate for that matter, you know, maybe you're not even married and you have a roommate and you have that goal board up and you can say, Hey, look, this is why I do what I do. And this is what I'm aiming for. So I really need your cooperation in the respect that I need my, when I'm in my office with the door closed. Although I was interviewing one of my entrepreneurs yesterday, um, Brianna, who said, you know, when she first started her business and she was trying to do a conference call and her kids were running around, she'd go stick herself in the closet and put clothes over her head. So it was kind of muffled so that she was being a professional on the phone. It was an awesome story. So this all ties in together. It's just really good, good, juicy information and good nuggets for all of us to take away. So thanks for sharing that. That was just, that's yeah, phenomenal. There's, there's something very intriguing about the imperfection no, of, of like, I think it's more relatable when Mm -hmm. you're talking to somebody on like a business call and one of your kids comes in because they're bleeding out or whatever. Um, (laughs) Like that's real life. Let's talk about bleeding out, but okay, yeah. (laughs) The first time I ever said don't bleed on the carpet was my realization that I was that mom. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, but it's all good. Hospital today. That is pretty much what I said to my kids a lot when they were growing up. Um, That's good stuff. what would I say? Perfectly imperfect. 
That's yep. just, well, and we're all figuring that out now. I mean, everybody's working from home. You see, all, you know, then even the news personalities doing that kind of thing. But, but the difference is you're doing it every day and they're just realizing what you've been doing is exactly what this is how life runs. So that is just fantastic. So, um, so tell us, um, a little bit more about your wellness business. Tell us a little bit about what we need to know, how, um, uh, you know, how people uh, can understand a little bit better about what you're doing. We understand why you did it, but what is it? What exactly are you doing? Sure. Um, well, you know, while I was heading in for my first brain surgery, I really was like, you know what? I'm obviously not going to be able to work with kids anymore, or maybe I shouldn't because I didn't know what life was going to be like post-surgery. In fact, they really thought I was going to be much worse off than I am. Um, so I decided that um, I would sell off all the daycare stuff that I had mm -hmm. and pay for my tuition for integrative nutrition. So I actually did that while I was at um, Georgetown recovering from brain surgery. <laughs> I like I was wow. all online. Goodness, lady. I think all of us want to be you when we grow up. Good gosh. You know, it's a muscle too. If you don't use it, you lose it, right? That's um, right. That, That's right. I think helped me through that recovery. But going through all of that and realizing how powerful what we expose ourselves to and what we put in our body and in our mind, um, that positively affected my recovery. And the fact that mm -hmm. I was able to reverse an autoimmune disease that most people go their entire life with just living with those symptoms, it really made me feel like, you know what, I need to branch out more. I need to help more people. And mm -hmm. that I am still here, um, that I made it through um, actually nine surgeries in five years on my spine, on my nerves. And it made me think, you know what, I survived this for a reason. And it just kept coming to me that there are people out there that are going through something similar or maybe not exactly the same, but they've gone to all the doctors, they've gone to all the specialists, they've taken all the medication, they've done all the treatments, and they still don't feel good about themselves or they don't feel. Mm -hmm. And I know because I've been there, I've done that. And I was in the same boat. And just to teach people that it's a different, that there's a different way to do things. Mm -hmm. And it starts with our nutrition. <laughs> it starts with what we're feeding ourselves, what we're feeding our mind. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, it's very empowering. And that, yeah, that for sure. the takeaway that I got out of all of it. And that's what I try to do for other people. And whether that be helping to set them up with some type of game plan of where they're going to go based on their goals, or if that be maybe helping them uh, fill in their nutritional gaps with certain supplements, or mm -hmm. maybe it's just being that shoulder, that, that ear to listen to what it is they're going through and just, and that's the thing. It's like, I'm not their cheerleader. I'm their, I'm their coach, which means I'm there to help them solve their own problems. I'm mm -hmm. not there to solve it for them. And gotcha. I'm saying, well, I'm, I'm going to bring that up in a little bit when you ask me what my, my strength is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Very good. I love it. I love it. So you're more guiding them through those pieces and those struggles, um, not just particularly the food, but also those things that are driving that kind of thing. Right, right. You know, and, the I love it. I love it. Start with the food for people because most people think it's all about food. Yeah, yeah. So we go right to that. And mm -hmm. that's, you know, I'm like, okay, we'll deal with the food part. But as we're dealing with that and we're cleaning that up, people start cleaning up other aspects of their life. Yeah, but it kind of sure. falls it falls into place and, and then they start realizing, oh, I was doing this with food and it really had nothing to do with food. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. I love it. Okay. Um, so um, when you think about, and I asked this because I just really love this question. Uh, so I really want to know what you feel like your superpower is. And when I say superpower, and if you've watched any of this or anybody's watched this, I don't mean uh, well, maybe I do mean it totally depends on you, but it doesn't have to be like, oh, I'm fantastic at this. What it really is, is what gives you the tingles? What like makes your hair go set on fire? What makes you like um, just rush to take care of whatever that is because it's just so energizing and powerful for you? Well, and this, this is what I was saying before. So my superpower is probably also a weakness, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, yeah. It's problem solving. 
and pushing through or pushing down those walls that we don't want to push down or go through. But problem solving, like I am a problem solver. I want to solve everybody's problem. And that, when I say it's a weakness, is because if I solve somebody's problem, just like when you're raising kids, if you do everything for them, they never learn from themselves. So mm. although I sit there and I'm listening to people, I'm like, I know how to solve your problem. No, I don't. <laughs> I may think I do, but they need to find out on their own. Right. I love that. Wow. That's really in insightful because you know that that's what you really like to do, but you also know how to get from the beginning of that stage for someone and walking them through problem solving it so they can figure it out next time on their own. Uh, that's, that's just, I mean, I think that's part of that whole process, but it's very intuitive of you to have thought that through and know that that's your, that's your energy and that's what you love. But to make sure that you're getting the proper result for the people that you're working with, you know how to um, tame that and make sure that you're using it to your best advantage into theirs. Right. I like it. I absolutely love that. All right. So we already talked about how long you've been doing this. And um, so, you know, we talked a little bit about why you started it, but, you know, fast forward. So tell us what you, and you know, my question's kind of like, how long have you been doing it? Why did you start it? And why are you still doing it now? And I guess the answer to, or the reason for that question is, you know, when you've been doing something more than a year or maybe even just a year, then you look back and go, wow, is this what I really want to be doing? Or wow, I, I'm so much farther along and I feel even stronger about that. And this is why. So give us a little bit about that. Um, I would say what is keeping me doing this is my clients. Um, when I get an email or a message or a voicemail or a call from one of my clients, that's like, you know what? I'm no longer diabetic. I'm no longer pre-diabetic. Um, I no longer need five medications just to be able to get through the day. Or I feel so good that my doctor has taken me off of my antidepressants. Um, uh, just yeah. things like that. Or it could be even as simple as, wow, my child's asthma isn't is not existent anymore. As a mom, I get that. Like that's huge to know that your child's not suffering. Um, just those type of responses from my clients, that is what does it for me. Well, you that know you're in the right sweet spot when you get those feelings because you get that warm and fuzzy when somebody sends you that because what you're doing is making a difference. So I absolutely love that. That's a really good um good uh thoughts and insight and about an overall feeling that we all feel when you're doing something, working on somebody else's project, whether you own a business, run your own business, or you're working for somebody else, when you solve somebody's problem and they respond to it, you realize, wow, this is what I really like to do. And this is really giving me that energy and not necessarily, um, or instead, I guess I should say, instead of, wow, you know, hey, that's great. I'm glad you feel better, you know, kind of thing. So obviously you're definitely in that perfect spot where you want to be. So, you know, one thing I like to ask everybody is what's the number one question you're asked first? And the reason I ask this, and I've talked about this in a couple different interviews, but, you know, one of the things I do is I like to help entrepreneurs, business people, um, people that are working through their business world or ideas that they want to do, figure out, how to communicate like we're doing now. A lot of people just don't know all the stuff that they know to share and the good information that they have. And one of the first things I do when I'm working with somebody is get them to talk to me about questions that people ask them. Not about what you know in your brain, but more about what people are asking you questions about. So I think it's really important to, uh, for us as we're talking to understand not necessarily just all the good stuff you know, but what do people want to know? Because that's how you share more effectively. So give us give us a nugget. <laughs> well, first, I get a lot of people that come to me with a diagnosis from their doctor or their specialist. And my question to them is, well, but how do you feel? A diagnosis doesn't mean anything. You can have a diagnosis and, and feel great, but how do you feel? And then we dig and we get to the root of, why you're having those symptoms. Why are you feeling that way? Um, but I would say overall, the biggest thing always is weight. It's always yeah, worse. And my response to them is let's put that aside and let's focus on doing the things to get healthy. Because when you become your healthiest self, you will just naturally fall into your healthy weight. 
And everybody's healthy weight looks different. Yeah. Not everybody's healthy weight is a size two. Absolutely. Most people's aren't. <laughs> the size two is probably not supposed to be a size two. <laughs> but, you know, but we have from, from media and, and just society, we have this thing in our brain that we have to be a certain size. We have to be a certain way. Um, I know people that are what by, you know, st normal standards would be overweight and they are their healthiest, the strongest they've ever been in their life. Mm -hmm. Even more healthy and stronger than when they were thinner. Yeah, Thin does always equate to the healthiest, but it yeah. really, it's very individualized. But that's the thing I tell them to focus on doing the things you need to do to get healthy. And as you do that, you will become your healthy weight. That's just the way the formula works. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I absolutely love this. You know, that's really good information. The funny thing is the first person I interviewed yesterday had a, um, a similar kind of background and, you know, that's a resonating thing in the wellness industry is it's really not um, about that, but more importantly, that you are digging in and listening to what people are asking you and you're uh, addressing those things based on the questions that they're asking. And that's one thing that I like to talk to people about is, you know, it's not always just about the, um, the intricate details of what you do for a living. It's more about the people that you serve and what don't they understand that you can help with. So I just absolutely love that you're listening and tailoring things based on what people are, are getting to you at, which is really very powerful. Very powerful. Thank you very much for sharing that. So what do you think, um, you know, and this is a question that I don't always ask everybody, but I feel like this is, this is really poignant in your particular case. So if you had to choose how long you could do this, um, what do you, what do you think? Do you say, uh, and when I say that, I mean, I, I'm not like, oh, in 10 years, I'm going to sell my business and go do something else or, you know, whatever. Well, I mean, where do you feel, where do you see yourself with this journey that you're on? Um, it's funny that you say that because I've noticed just in the last six to nine months, I've noticed that my business has kind of started to do this, but aligned. Um, so I have my client base where I'm helping them with, with the health and wellness, but then what's happening is a lot of them are feeling so empowered that they want to start doing what I'm doing. Nice. So, wow. That's interesting. I'm also becoming a business coach and how I've run my business and how they duplicating it basically so that yeah. they can do the same thing because the wow. fact that you, you don't have to have a degree of, or a certification I mean, it's nice to have, but you don't have to have that. Right. Any with a passion for health and wellness and uh, a servant heart who wants to help other people when they're down is really all that you need. Everything else you learn as you go. You know, I love this because one thing that's true in most business is um, no matter if you're a solopreneur or you own a business that you have several employees is you can't be all everything to everybody, right? So you couldn't have 300 clients all at the same time. It just, it's not physically possible. So how do you duplicate yourself? And this is uh, just, you know, a whole nother series that we could clearly do about, you know, running your business and, and growing your business incrementally with, uh, support. I actually did an interview. Well, I was interviewed by someone else yesterday and we were talking about exactly this is like your support system and, and what it looks like and not just paid employees, but in this case, and it really hadn't occurred to me until you just said this, but in this case, it is exactly that it's growing a business incrementally because you're integrating people that have similar interests and you are, you know, giving them the direction and, and growing them based on um, your format of, of your business and how it actually runs. Because, you know, there can be a thousand or a hundred thousand health and wellness coaches, but no one's you. And so how you do it is the reason you're successful with the people that you work with. So that's really cool. I, I, that's a neat insight. And I appreciate you sharing that. So to answer your question, I, I definitely foresee in 10 years, the, the business coaching side of it um, and overtaking the, the client, but I'll never give up helping people with their health and wellness either directly. I just, yeah, that, that. that's I clearly am. a passion for you. Absolutely. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Um, okay. So um, uh, the last thing I wanted to ask you, and I've asked a lot of people this, but if you were stuck in an elevator with three people, you, if anybody's watched any of our interviews, you already know this, this question, but if you're stuck in an elevator with three people and you were literally stuck, you guys couldn't get out and you went around the elevator and said, all right. What do you do for a living? Give it, give it to us in 10 words or less. <laughs> um, 
how are you feeling? Would you like to feel better in 30 days or less? I can help. I like that. Wow. That's, I mean, it, it, it's a thought provoking question. <laughs> it's just, really good. And, and what I do and the power of what people can do for themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Well, clearly you have that passion uh, and teaching people how to take care of themselves, which is really cool. I love it. I absolutely love it. Stacey, if somebody wants to talk to you after we're done, how do they find you? Um, I am all over social media, especially right now in these times. It's the only way we socialize, right? Um, my last name, Stacy Lane. Um, you can go to stacylanewellness.com. That's my blog. Um, you can check out a bunch of free resources, a bunch of free um, digital downloads to help you in different aspects of your health and wellness. I post lots of uh healthy or healthier recipes uh, for people that are either vegan, gluten-free, um, low carb, paleo, keto, all the things. There is a little bit of everything on there for everybody. because sure. everybody... um, But those are the basic ways. And then when you go to those um, social media or my, my uh, website and blog, um, there's ways to reach out and contact me directly to be based on what people's needs are. Awesome. Awesome. Well, it is, and I mispronounced your last name when we first went on and I truly apologize. Okay. Yeah. Well, same with mine. <laughs> same with mine. So I understand, but I, I do apologize because uh, I just didn't have that. So I'm sorry, but, but everybody, so you guys got, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Right. Well, you guys, uh, this has been just my absolute pleasure to talk to this lady about um, her passion is just incredible. And your her insight about how to take care of people and why things are happening. And imagine going through this story is just so powerful because imagine going through the things that this lady has gone through in her life and where she is taking that to help other people and, and just how she's living her life. I mean, that alone is just the most empowering thing. And what a fantastic way to start out our Friday interviews um, Stacy, I just can't thank you enough for being part of our interview series. And guys, I want you to reach out, follow Stacy, and and look at her information. She does post stuff all the time and gives a lot of good information out. And certainly, is somebody that you can reach out to and get for more information if you're um, if you need some assistance or you want to just sit and chat and you know try to figure out what you need to do next. Stacy is your lady. So thank you again for being on with us this morning. I truly appreciate you. You're welcome. Thanks for the invite. This was fun. This was great. Let's do it again. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's absolutely do it again. All right, lady, you have a fantastic rest of the day. Guys, stay tuned in. We have another interview coming up in just about 40 minutes. So I look forward to seeing you guys again real soon. Stacy, you enjoy the rest of your day and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody.